Welcome to Lenny's take on gun control. I'm Lenny Fisher. This is my rant. Uh, I will be doing a weekly episode of Lenny's take on due out every Friday. Let me introduce myself. As I said, I'm Lenny Fisher. I'm a 52 year old male. I'm a father of five, grandfather of five. Uh, previously owned several different businesses. Uh, I've been an activist, longtime activist. I'm a dog lover. Uh, I'm a proud American. I've also been a supporter of gun rights throughout my life. Now I haven't always done everything perfect. I'm pretty much just a regular guy. I've had my bouts with drug issues, alcohol issues. I've overcame them. I've overcame a lot of adversity. So I'm not an expert on everything, but I do have an opinion on many things. Today we're talking about gun control. It certainly is a hot topic nowadays. Last Friday morning, our country got the tragic news of the, the loss of 26 lives, 20 of which being children, 6, 7 years old. I have grandchildren around that age. And, uh, it, it hit my heart. It hit my soul. I don't know how anyone couldn't relate to it if they have children or grandchildren or nieces and nephews, but I certainly did. And I shed some tears over it, and I'm sure I'll shed some, shed some more. But this massacre is not an anomaly. I mean... Virginia Tech, Columbine, uh, the Arizona shooting with Gabby Gifford, uh, three days before the Connecticut shooting there was a shooting in Clackamas, Oregon in a mall. And uh, there's a common denominator, there's several common denominators and and in the, the whole gun control issue or gun control topic there's several different issues and I'm going to try to address some of, some of them today you know Webster's defines gun control as regulation of the selling owning and the use of guns yet a lot of Americans think gun control means they can't have their guns they can't have guns period and that the Many of these people believe that, that it's, you know, a big government conspiracy to remove all their guns so we can have a tyrannical government and what have you. And, and uh, I, just, I just don't buy into that. Uh, while I believe that our, our government certainly has many ills and needs a lot of work and maybe some restoration... I, I just don't think that's the goal of our government to, to disarm us all. These same people who take that side of this, they, they, they quote the Second Amendment. And certainly it's part of what guides us. Uh, our Constitution is, is very deep and, and was pretty well thought out however it was well thought out for the time and our second amendment reads a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed it's important to understand that that says well-regulated militia uh, realistically we don't really have militias nowadays but there are some out there I guess in some states or in some areas or what have you I don't believe they're well regulated. 
so I take that as meaning we regulating weapons and and how these weapons are used, what type of weapons, etc. Uh, shall not be infringed. A lot of people hang on that 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 it means that there's there should be no guidelines whatsoever that any weapon is a, a weapon is a weapon is a weapon is a weapon. I I don't buy into that. I think that the that there's a there's a way to protect the Second Amendment rights uh, while respecting the will and desire and the security of a society as a whole. Uh, but obviously, there's there's two sides to the gun issue. You know, some people believe that uh, more guns make us safer. Some believe that uh, more guns make us more unsafe. I'm not really here to debate that. What I am here to say is that we need to we need to find some kind of a happy medium between that, and we need to stop these killings. Uh, and we need to do something soon. You know, in inside of this gun control issue, there's the the whole issue of of banning guns and banning certain types of weaponry. Uh, along with that, there's mental issues, mental health care issues, and there's also media that we need to take a look at, and parenting skills. All of these issues are all wrapped up in gun control policy, whether we like it or not. It is what it is. So these, these supporters of, of gun rights, what, what they're really afraid of is they're afraid of these weapons being banned altogether and taken away. And the, the weapons that we're really talking about here, and I, I, I think any, anybody, as I said, that I, I'm a gun rights advocate, so I, I believe that we should be allowed to have weapons in our home and what have you, but we have to be realistic about what kind of weapons we're talking about. A military assault weapon that fires off 90 rounds in a matter of seconds is not something that people carry around with them in their day-to-day -day lives as a form of self-defense protection. It's just not realistic. If someone's going to can carry a concealed weapon, it's usually a sidearm or a handgun holstered or what have you. It's just not feasible to carry around some big old assault weapon with you all the time. So what are they using this gun for? Are they using it for hunting? Well, if you've got to use this type of weapon to hunt, maybe you shouldn't be hunting because you suck. If you can't shoot whatever game you're chasing within five, six shots, you really have no business hunting. Uh, so that brings us back to what are these weapons being used for? Well, they're being used for two things. One is is to to is a sport, you know, to go to the gun range. I've done it. I've gone to the gun range many a times, and it's it's a blast. I have a great time. The adrenaline gets going. It's it's really cool, you know, it's fun, but what have you. But I can go and have the same fun with a with a nine millimeter or, or or other weapons. I don't I don't need a, a military assault weapon to have fun that way. And then the other way they're being used is to kill our students, to kill our people, to, to walk in and, and do these mass murders at random. So why do we really need those assault weapons? I don't think we do. I think that these weapons that cause so much mayhem need to be reserved for what they should be used for as a tool for the military and for the police. Even the police, you don't see them every day walking around carrying AR-15s and uh, all these other assault weapons. They do have them. They have them at the ready, but they're not carrying them around everywhere they go. They pull them out when necessary. Well, some people would say they pull them out when they're not necessary. And that's another topic for another day. 
Others try to say that, well, you know, we want these weapons because we, we're, we're worried about tyranny of our government and what have you. Well, let's be realistic about this now. Uh, you could have the most badass military assault weapon. And if your government really wanted to su subject you to tyranny, they're going to do it no matter what. They have access to our food. They have access to our water. Uh, they have access to our medicines. Therefore, if they really wanted to do something, that that military assault weapon you have isn't really going to help you. So that kind of removes that from the argument as far as I'm concerned. I, I just don't see that as part of the argument. I think that we we get caught up in, in, in the fact that gun control is the way to go and gun control means no guns and, and that's just not what it has to mean. I believe that we can come up with a responsible, reasonable gun control policy that does not infringe on the right to keep and bear arms yet makes us a safer nation. And I think that we need to look at the picture as a bigger picture and tackle it one by one. You know, the early Americans, they, when, 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 they, when they, our forefathers wrote this, the Constitution, they, they talked about the right to, to form militias and what have you, and the whole idea was to deter against tyrannical government, repelling invasion, suppressing insurrection, facilitating a natural right to self-defense, uh, participating in law enforcement, enabling people to organize a militia system. These were the reasons. Of course, at that time, the reasons they were, or the weapons they were using were much different than what we use today. So we have to adapt the Second Amendment to our current status. I have to pause this right now and I'll get back to it. This is part one. Please uh, check out part two.